Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about this very unique firearm here. This is my Gangster Ergonomics Field Reconfigurable Rifle Slash Shotgun, abbreviated G-E-F-R-R-S-N, and pronounced Jefferson. Now, as you may have guessed, this was my latest gun building project. Uh, but don't worry, I'm not going off on some sort of gangster culture craze. Uh, in fact, really, the extent of my knowledge about gangsters and gangs and gang culture is really pretty much limited to the fact that out at the shooting range, I sometimes hear people refer to shooting gangster style, uh, by which they mean holding a gun sideways. I'm not even 100% sure where that stereotype comes from. I surmise that there must have been a famous gangster movie where the gangsters in the movie did that, and that's what got the stereotype started, but that's just speculation on my part. Anyway, uh, I have a long list of you know gunsmithing projects that I eventually like to take on, and having heard the stereotype about gangster uh, shooting or gangster style shooting, I had often wondered if shooting sideways might actually have ergonomic advantages. I mean, I think it's obvious that shooting a standard gun sideways is less ergonomic than holding it in the normal orientation, but what if you had a gun that was designed to be held sideways? Would that make the difference? Um, so, that was on my list of projects, but it was far enough down on the list that, by itself, it probably would never have actually gotten built. However, one thing that was pretty close to the top of the list was building a successor for my Universal Testing Apparatus handgun, uh, effectively known as the Utah Pistol. Uh, and the more that I got into the design, the more I realized that I could considerably simplify the mechanism if I allowed a cocking handle to protrude from the top of the receiver. Now, the problem with that is that if you've got a lever sticking up from the top of the receiver, that would obscure your sight picture. But, if you rotate the gun 90 degrees, now what was the top of the receiver becomes the left side of the receiver, and that ceases to be a problem. And so I decided to kill two birds with one stone, as they say, and go ahead and simplify the design, and then I can check off that other uh, project that was a much lower priority as well. So, sometime in the near future, I'll probably be making a video exploring the ergonomics of the sideways stock. Uh, but for today, I really want to talk more about this gun in the context of its primary role as a successor to the Utah pistol. Now, if you've been following my channel, you're probably familiar with my Universal Testing Apparatus handgun, or Utah. This is just a very simple single-shot pistol uh, that uses interchangeable barrels that just thread into the front of the receiver finger tight. And uh, this has been very useful for testing experimental barrel designs, but it has its limitations. First and foremost, there's really no way to safely carry the Utah around with a shell in the chamber. Uh, you know, this is a very simple mechanism, it doesn't have a grip safety, it doesn't have a half cock, it doesn't have anything like that, so either it's cocked or it's not, and either way the firing pin is connected directly to the cocking handle on the back, so if you had a round in the chamber and the hammer is not cocked, then the firing pin is just resting on the primer, and if you were to drop it, that cocking handle would probably hit the ground and detonate the cartridge. Uh, conversely, if you cock it, it might actually be less likely to go off if it were dropped, but yeah, you really don't want to carry a loaded, cocked, single-action pistol around, you know, in the field. Uh, so, 
really the manual of arms for this is that you don't load it or you don't load the barrel until you're ready to take the shot. Uh, and for testing barrels at a shooting range, that's fine. But if I wanted to do more of a field test, you know, take a homemade gun hunting or something, well, I can't really do that with the Utah. Secondly, and perhaps most obviously, the Utah takes a long time to reload. Uh, I, I want to say it's about 14 revolutions that it takes to fully unthread the barrel from the receiver. Uh, you know, and then if you put a cartridge in it or swap out barrels or something, you know, then it takes about another 14 revolutions to fully install it again. Uh, and, you know, that's not as cumbersome as you might think if you're just testing barrels on the firing range. Uh, you know, typically for the tests that I've done, I don't need to put all that many rounds through it, and with a little bit of practice, it's surprising how fast you can go through, you know, 20 or 30 rounds, uh, you know, with this gun, but it would still be nice to be able to reload it a little bit quicker. A third limitation of the Utah is just the size of the receiver. You know, this has been a great platform for testing pistol caliber barrels, but I'd be pretty leery of trying to make like a full power rifle caliber barrel for this just because of the limited diameter of barrel that I have to work with. And, you know, if I wanted to make uh, maybe a 12 gauge shotgun barrel with some kind of unorthodox choke that I wanted to try out, well, that's totally out of the question because the rim of a 12 gauge cartridge won't even fit into the front of the receiver on the Utah, let alone a barrel that's designed to chamber 12 gauge. And finally, if I am going to start doing more field testing, especially of barrels in larger calibers that are going to generate more recoil, it really makes a lot of sense to graduate from a handgun to some kind of a shoulder-fired platform. And so using these four you know, primary limitations of the Utah as design criteria for the Jefferson, this is what I came up with. Mechanically, it's actually very similar to the Utah in how it operates. You know, linear hammer, threaded coupler on the front. However, with the Jefferson, I have a half cock setting. So pull the cocking handle about halfway back, clicks into half cock. Now it's blocked, so you know you can beat on the uh, cocking lever all day, and it's not going to drop the firing pin. The trigger is also blocked when it's on half cock, so that's not going to get accidentally pulled. This allows me to safely carry around in the chamber if I want to. And then, when I'm ready to fire, just pull it back to full cock and then pull the trigger. Again, like the Utah, I've got this threaded coupler on the front. But in this case, I cut an interrupted thread. I think you can see that on the camera. So, with an interrupted thread, now... It only takes a quarter turn to lock the barrel in place or to fully unlock it for uh, swapping barrels or reloading. Um, as you can probably tell, this is a larger diameter coupler than I had on the Utah. Uh, this happens to be a 12 gauge barrel that I've got in it at the moment. And obviously it has a shoulder stock. So now that you know what this is and where it came from, let's take it out to the range and put a couple of rounds through it. First, I'm going to place it on half cock. There it is. That blocks both the trigger as well as the uh, firing pin. Now, I'll turn the barrel 90 degrees and remove it from the gun. Drop a cartridge in the barrel. Get that put back together. Since it's an interrupted thread, only takes a quarter turn to lock it in place. Now when I'm ready to fire, all I gotta do is pull the hammer back to half cock and it'll be hot.
So there's my Jefferson for you. Uh, you'll probably be seeing this gun in future episodes as I get around to doing various experiments with it, but until then, thanks for watching The Idaho Show.